Hello and welcome to another episode of the Monday Mile podcast. And today I'm delighted to say we're walking a mile in County Down, Northern Ireland. And I'm walking with a two-time world champion, a three-time European champion, the Commonwealth champion, and Northern Ireland's very own Olympic gold medalist, Rhys McLennigan. Welcome to the Monday Mile podcast. Well, thanks for having me. Where are we? We're in Bangor, County Down, close to my hometown of Newton Ards, but I have recently bought a house here in Bangor. So no way! Yeah, I get to know. And it's the city now. Did you know that Bangor is the city now? Boom! Yeah. Claim that. The first <laughs> time the mile has ever been in Bangor and it's officially a city. Yeah, that's it. The weather is absolutely delightful. It's not bad. It's a bit windy, but by the sea. So it's to be expected, I guess. Yeah, we can't complain. For those people that are new to Reese take our listeners back to a little something that happened this summer. Yeah, so I mean, I competed in my second Olympic Games at the Paris Olympics. We got to see the contrast from Tokyo. It seemed like it was the a complete opposite Olympic Games. In Tokyo, of course, I officially became an Olympian, which was quite cool. Congratulations, um, huge you. achievement in <laughs> yeah. itself. But uh, then in Paris, we went one more and got to take home that gold medal on the Palmer Horse event. So, yeah, a good time. Now, going into that Olympic Games, you were the man to be. Going mm. in as a two-time world champion, did you feel the pressure? A little bit, I guess, but uh, I feel like that pressure is good in a way. It allows you to continue to push because you know that people are coming behind you and trying to, like, well, you're the guy to beat. So they're continually pushing you to train harder. But in that moment of competing the routine, it's really just down to me, just doing that routine one more time, like I've done plenty of times in training. But that routine you did on that particular day yeah. was outstanding. Yeah, and for the rest of the gymnastics community, I'm sure they can agree that that's one of the best bomber horse routines of all time, especially under the circumstances that I needed to you know, beat a huge score that the Kazakhstan gymnast put down and it was the most difficult routine I'd ever put out and it was also the best score I've ever got in my international career so it was a good time to do it to say the least. Yeah and to be able to deliver it on that day under that immense amount of pressure did it feel different to <clears throat> any other day? I mean yeah a little bit. One thing I will say is that it felt very similar to like a world championships or something. That day is what you want to feel like. You want to feel like it is just another competition but as soon as you land that dismount and your job is finished, then that's when you start to realize, like, I just done a routine at the Olympic Games final, absolutely nailed it. So it's a sense of relief when that emotion kind of hits you when your feet hit the floor. It's a huge accumulation of hard work that takes you to that moment. To be able to deliver, those are the things that we as athletes dream of. Did it feel surreal in the moment of, you know, I've actually done this now. Yeah. At the time of asking, it doesn't get harder in terms of being able to put something down when it's required. Yeah, and I'm sure you felt this yourself where you're dreaming about like one little moment for your entire career, your entire life more or less. Then it just it is just happening in front of you which is a crazy feeling. And I kind of really tried to take in that feeling as much as I could because there's four other gymnasts after me in that Olympic final. Every moment I was trying to savor it as best as I could. Look around the stadium, try to spot my parents in the crowd, look at the Olympic rings on the banners and just realize what I'd done and accomplished even just in that moment. Even though I hadn't actually officially saw that I'd won, it was just savoring that moment as best as I could. So I'm glad I'd done that. I mean, even to be able to function at that level, to have that awareness around you, the magnitude is a real testament <clears throat> to your mental strength as well as your resilience because so many athletes, they get on the big stage, you know, for the first time, second time, and, and people do just crumble. Yeah, so. it's so true. And you see it time and time again in different sports. And I think that is the beauty of performing under pressure like that is... That if I'd done that routine in training, you know, people would be like, that's a great routine, but it's not anything compared to how it would be framed in a competition because yeah. everyone's not only thinking about the skills in the routine, they're thinking about the gravity of the situation. And that's why the Olympics and Winter Olympics are so important because it does put all of these athletes under immense pressure. And it's about who can perform on that day the best. To perform the routine of your life. There was a beautiful <laughs> moment between you and 
Olympic legend Louis Smith mm. after yeah, your... Yeah, yeah. It's funny because in snowboarding we call it a run. It's not yeah. obviously a run. So, yeah. But after your performance, you spoke about the pilot with him. Mm. Yeah, you the engaged, autopilot. The pilot uh -huh. engaged. Can you take me to that moment and that feeling? Because for our listeners, many of them won't have ever felt that. When I was talking to Lewis Smith after the competition, it was an incredible feeling because he was somebody I looked up to for so many years in his performance in the London Olympic Games. Just like I was saying about that he performed under pressure, immense, immense pressure. And that's something that I took huge amount of respect for him from. Probably one of my favorite Olympic moments before I'd won. That was a person that I looked up to for so long. And when we were talking afterwards, he was kind of saying, you know, like, how did you feel in that Olympic final? And yeah. I was like, I completely understand it because he said in a previous interview about flicking on the autopilot switch. And you only get the right to flick on that autopilot switch if you've done the work in training. And that's exactly how I felt. I'm sure it's exactly how he felt. And that autopilot switch is symbolizing kind of the easy part is doing the routine. That just makes it so much better and so much more calm when you put the hours in in training to then eventually do that routine in competition. In that moment, when you've turned on that switch, what's going on inside your head? I guess just the, the cues that I need to hit in my routine, the pointers, kind of guide me through that routine and keep me grounded. Just not let myself think about the gravity of the situation or anybody watching or the, you know just the fact that you're at Olympic Games. You almost need to trick your mind into thinking this is just training. And those cues, are they bespoke to you or are they sort of gymnastic terms? They're gymnastics terms, a little bit of bespokeness to myself as Anything, well. Anything uh, fun or they're, intimate in your uh, not either. little they're, self talk? They're, they're boring. It's, it is boring stuff. It's like one word things like pick up the speed or arch your hips or, you know, push tall. These little cues that I understand, it's like code words I'm speaking in but things that can come very quickly to me because it's a continual apparatus. There's no stopping in it where you can kind of gather your thoughts, get your breath. It flows the whole way through it. So you need to have those cues sitting ready. I used to have like toe, heel, toe, yeah. bang. And yeah, the, the yeah. bang was like the explosion at the, <laughs> uh -huh. at the end. Completely. Talk to me about the physicality required because the training that's needed to be put in to achieve what you achieved yeah. is something else well yeah in gymnastics it's all about numbers repeating the skills time and time again and i think that's the the real physical side of it when it then does come down to the competition like i said before that the routine is the easy part because you're only doing 10 skills the routine only lasts 46 seconds and although it is enduring the real enduring part of gymnastics is the training aspect where you're repeating those skills every single day hundreds or thousands of times so that's where it really does take a toll on the body so to be fit for that moment, what would your training look like a typical week? Typical week, it would be anywhere between like 25 to 32 hours per week. It really does vary with the how far away you are from the competition. Like if you're in a taper phase, the closer you are to the competition. Or if you're in like an endurance week, then that's when the training load is really, really heavy. It could be six hour sessions in the day. It could be four hours, three hours. It, it really does vary. So. Um, I can't even give a clear answer to that. And let's talk about the contrast, because obviously you're just back from Paris yeah. and you've had a crazy few months. How have you managed to sort of retain some form of balance within the chaos? I've seen one minute you're in London, the next minute you're in Dublin, you're public speaking. Just yeah. the other night we had the incredible celebration yeah. for our athletes Which here. you were great in, by the way. Oh, You've done thank a great you. job presenting that. <laughs> At the SSE yeah. arena. And I was like, where's Reese gone? One minute you're up on the stage <laughs> with me, the next minute you're at another awards. You yeah, are yeah. a man in demand <laughs> being pulled in a multitude of directions. How's it been? It's been fun. I haven't been training as much. I'm still training every day, but just the intensity is lessened. Yeah. But what I'm finding with that is when you don't train as much, you've got so much energy. And that's like, I just have energy for days now. So that's them being channeled into like these public speaking things, going to different awards evenings, stuff like that, like you saw the other night. But um, yeah, the, I'm trying to make the most of this. I know that this doesn't last forever. So I'm taking every opportunity I can get and just celebrating with as many people as possible as well. And are you enjoying that? 
because it's yeah. quite different from the normal routine of, of life for you. Yeah, oh, it certainly is, but uh, it's something I've always kind of looked forward to. Uh, and it's a it's an unknown question. What What's life going to be like after winning an Olympic gold medal? I'm getting the answer right now. It's a very busy life, but at the same time, it's something that I have always been curious to see, and I'm glad it's finally come. Is it kind of surreal being back here in County Down? You know, people are now going, that's Ruth Clemmigan. <laughs> Everyone's so nice, like, and nobody's weird about it. If somebody recognises me, they'll just say, hey, well done, congratulations, or tap me on the shoulder, be like, hey, we're all proud of you. It's always such nice things. So it's never been a burden in any way being recognised for me. Everyone is just so genuine, so pleasant. That is so, so lovely to hear. And especially being here in our little city yeah. today. <laughs> It was actually here that we first met when yeah, I right. was an athlete. There was like an old gymnastics club and I'll never forget meeting you there. But yeah. actually it was my brother that really recognised your resilience. My brother is a couple of years younger uh -huh. and he just has this vision in his head of you being on the rings yeah, okay. and, and holding, what's this, <laughs> the what's cross, this thing called? The cross. The cross. Yeah, yeah. And, and even then, like the inspiration you created as uh, we were hurling ourselves around uh, basics adult gymnastics. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I remember that too. And I remember being quite taken back that there was an Olympian in the gym at the time. And it was obviously yourself. So I remember yeah. taking a huge, like I, I got a little bit of a lift from that. And I was ah. like, I need to show off in front of her. <laughs> well, <laughs> because you definitely she's an did. <laughs> that was so special. I suppose that would have been in between my first and second Olympics because we did yeah. quite a bit of dry land training. But I don't think it was ever quite to the finesse of, of your gymnastics. <laughs> I remember just sort of occasionally trying to hurl myself into a double backflip yeah. in the foam pit and hope for the best. <laughs> Are you enjoying training less and being able to explore other forms of movement like your running and yeah. your walking because yeah yeah i mean I'm, I'm new to running i'm going out and playing golf i'm going to the the climbing gym sometimes a bit of climbing yeah it's, that's it's, cool it's, it's good fun and it's good to kind of throw caution into the wind now yeah. because before the olympics you know it was just such a big thing to preserve my body as much as i could yeah really just focus on staying healthy and fit but now i can enjoy exercise a little bit more and i remember probably about two years ago us sort of reconnecting in between the olympic games because you also like your walking yeah i love and walking. your time on your own yeah expand a little bit on that for me i I'll probably enjoy being on my own a little bit too much but i'm now learning that company is an experience doubled i'm enjoying that and you kind of figure that out when you do go on travels by yourself and stuff i went to nice in france it would have been like last year or so and it was just like a little vacation by myself and the whole time i was like oh i'd, I'd love it if like a friend was here with me or my girlfriend was here with me to then just experience it with me and that kind of changed my mind of thinking I was just like you know, that lone wolf type person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy being with people. I'm very sociable and I love sharing experiences with as many people as I can. I like that, that an experience shared is an experience doubled. You're absolutely yeah. too right on that. But at the same time, those lone wolf moments, I think, as an athlete, can build mental resilience. I, I yeah. remember you went out and did some like ridiculous nine or ten mile walk along the county down coast. Do you think any of those moments where you were alone attributed to that mental resilience that was shown in Paris? Yeah, most certainly. And I think because it's such an individual sport and there's not many other high level gymnasts in this country, they're starting to become more and more now. But especially in that early part of my career, it would have just been myself and my coach in the gym training for like the Tokyo Olympic Games. Being comfortable with being by yourself, learning how to motivate yourself, not needing a team of people around you to kind of push you. That's a super important thing in this sport, especially with the position that I'm in of being the, one of the only ones and the, like the first to get these medals and accolades for the country. So learning to be by yourself is, is an important thing. So I, I say that's why I leaned into it a little bit more, especially in my earlier days. And in speaking of that resilience, that time on your own. Mm. Your journey as a gymnast from here has been slightly different from others. 
Yeah, I, and anybody starting a sport would normally start with like a club, but it's a well-established pathway yeah. to getting better, going into a certain league. That just wasn't there for gymnastics. It was very much so myself and my coach Luke trying to pave the way yeah. for like a new standard of gymnastics in the country. We were doing things that were bold. We had to be somewhat of outliers to, to be saying these things. Like we've got a 10 year plan and wow. at the end of this 10 year plan is an Olympic gold medal. And people were kind of like, well, that's just pointless. That's just- You're in Kiki Land. Yeah, you're in Kiki Land, exactly. I quite vividly remember this actually, where my coach Luke became one of the national squad coaches and he sat down a lot of coaches within the system in Ireland and told them this 10 year plan. They all just denied it. It was the craziest thing. And I like my jaw dropped to the floor and they were saying, this is just unnecessary standards setting the standard way too high for this country. It's unfair to us coaches to be put in this position where the standards are too high. I was just like, this is crazy because why wouldn't you set standards to the highest possible level? And then if you do that, they could be achieved. And now myself and my coach Luke, we've lived through those high standards we've always had on our minds and reap the rewards from it eventually. And you've put the train tracks in place to yeah. the next generation because you have proved yeah. it's possible. How important do you think it is to have had an event like the other night, the Olympic homecoming, celebrating Northern Ireland's athletes to inspire that next generation of young gymnasts? I think it's super important and then it makes meetings like my coach Luke had a number of years ago a lot easier because you literally have the proof. It's not just you fantasizing anymore or saying, it's in the plans, it's literally proof, we can do this. And I think it's also proof for the younger athletes coming through, like in the SSE last night, seeing the amount of school kids there, I'm sure there's a lot of aspiring Olympians in the audience back there. So for them to just see like, this is possible for a swimmer to come home with a gold medal, for a gymnast to come home with a gold medal, and then they are in any sport at all, they, they can aspire to be that Olympic champion, just like we have. It's a total game changer. And to do what you've done the way you have done is truly something else and you've rewritten history essentially yeah that must be wild <laughs> it, like, that's, it is. like your parents must be so proud you've done something nobody else has done yeah but it, it comes with a responsibility as well i think and that's to inspire that younger generation of athletes you got to kind of take it as it comes but also use the platform that i have to then really just get as many medals back into the country as possible because I want the younger generation to beat all my achievements. But obviously I'm not making it easy for them, <laughs> but I, I really want that to happen. I'd love the day to come where there's a, a young gymnast starting right now who in years to come, I'm celebrating with them with winning multiple Olympic medals or multiple world titles. And uh, that'll be a happy day. Now, take me back to Paris. Let's take down the professional role model mask. Did you get to celebrate? Yeah, I, I did. I Any uh, stories from the Olympic Village? <laughs> nothing too crazy, to be honest. No? Uh, we flew out, uh, my coach and I flew out my teammates and a couple of coaches from the gym back here. And it was good to just have them in Paris and celebrate together. One moment that stands out the most, though, is all my family were out there uh, watching. So we just had this big dinner afterwards and celebrated really calmly, which was nice because we could just sit, ha have a nice dinner and tell stories about, you know, my gymnastics career, what got us to this point. I think that was a real standout moment for me where I was just so grateful to have my loved ones around me. It is so special and I always say, it's never something that's done on your own. It is such a team effort yeah. from the people that are in kit and with you on the day, but it's the family that have been there through every single waking moment of those days that are tough because People only see that magic moment, yeah. the final result. Yeah, and those are the people, my family and friends that are around me, those are the people that have seen the difficult days, the not only the tip of the iceberg, but just what's underneath that water as well. They know the struggles and challenges I've been through more than anybody, so it's ever more special when I get to celebrate with them. Reese, we are on the Monday Mile podcast, so we like to ask all of our guests what the relationship is like with Monday. Do you like Monday? 
<laughs> it's indifferent to me. <laughs> and the amount of times somebody's like, oh, it's a bank holiday on Monday, and I have no idea that it's even Monday, let alone a bank holiday. For athletes, it's just different, I think. You just yeah. need to follow your training plan that your coach sets in front of you, and it doesn't really matter the day of the week. So Mondays are fine to me. Just another day. It is just another day. Living the dream. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Do you still love gymnastics? Yeah, more than anything. I will always be a gymnast first and foremost as long as I'm still in the sport and uh, I'll continually be in the sport in other ways after my career whether that be coaching maybe opening up my own club that would I'd, be cool I don't know I don't know what can the future holds can I come holds. and use your phone <laughs> yes yes you can you I can. still love a trampoline and a phone pit I know it's, it's so fun <laughs> maybe you can teach me a few things yes now how to, are my handstands not too bad actually yeah you're pretty good you yeah. got that good baseline with uh, yeah. snowboarding so you, yeah. you know your spatial awareness and you can do handstands and cartwheels, so you've got a good foundation for it. <laughs> we can't not deny that there is another Olympic Games coming up, and in between that, there is, of course, the Commonwealth Games, the yep. World Champs. Are we going to see you continue on this trajectory? Yeah, most certainly. It's not done yet, but we're in a nice position where we've done it all, but yeah. now it's time to just do it again. So. But Man. how do you do it again? That's the question. <laughs> that's like, it. that's real resilience. Yeah. The same thing again? Just keep getting better. And this is my competitive nature as well. If I'm saying I'm saying in this sport, every competition I go to, I'm looking for a gold medal. So it's a no-brainer for me. And if at any point in my career I say, oh, well, I'm just going to try and make the final here, you need to slap me over the back of the head. I'm going to shake you. Did you just show you? <laughs> that's when you need to tell me, finish the sport for good, because... That is not me. Every single competition I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking to win it. That's my competitive nature. That's why I'm continuing in this sport. You said we can be better. How can you be better? The rules change in gymnastics every four years. And that leaves a little bit of an opportunity to innovate, come up with a different routine construction and really come back with fresh gymnastics which is a really nice thing because then it means that i'm not just like practicing the same routine over and over again okay, nice. so you're having to switch up the routine actually in this olympic cycle the routines are actually getting a bit shorter but what that means is they need to be more difficult so you're going to see more no. difficult gymnastics you're going to see more hopefully cleaner gymnastics as well so sort of less endurance and more like explosion that's it so you, oh. you might even see a lot more risk a lot more falls in gymnastics this olympic cycle but it will be exciting stuff to watch. How does that suit you as an athlete? It suits me very well because I do do those uh, difficult skills. And one thing that would have got in the way is that endurance of the routine. And it's hard to do those difficult skills towards the end of the routine. But now that the routines have shortened from 10 skills to eight skills, I can now put in those difficult skills around the end of the routine, which is nice. The only way is up. And lastly, Reese, we like to ask, all of our guests if they have a life motto or quote that they live by that they can share with our listeners my one is be undeniable and that stems from a being in a sport that is subjective you need to be so much better than everyone else that you're undeniably the best and i feel like at these olympic games i did prove that and that's what took home the gold medal unreal reese mcclanagan you have, without a doubt, made your mark, not only in Northern Ireland, Ireland, the whole of the islands <laughs> in the UK. You're such a testament to hard work, and it has been such a pleasure watching your journey from afar. A massive, massive congratulations. Thank you very much, Eva. And thank you so much for joining us here on the Monday Mile. Thank you. <laughs> Monday Mile listeners, you know what to do. Do make sure you subscribe. The audio drops every single Monday morning for the early risers or the people like Reese that like to walk for how far did you walk? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm lost. I swear it was 15 like miles or something. 15 <laughs> miles. Monday Mile listeners have an absolutely wicked week. It's a wrap. <laughs>